I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years, I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now, I want to help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie. Fixing the money thing. Let's dig into this principle. Luke chapter 4, we're going to dig into this a little deeper. This, what you're about to hear is if I was coaching you, mentoring you, and you would say, Pastor Gary, I've got to know how this works. I would say you have to have what you're about to hear. You have to have it. Of course, I say that every week, but nevertheless, you have to have this. <laughs> okay, because it's all right here. All right, how does the kingdom of God operate? That's what we want to know because you can only duplicate it if you know how it operates, right? Luke chapter 4, we find Jesus teaching in his hometown. Verse 22, it says, They all spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. And they said, Hey, isn't this Joseph's son? I mean, this is Joseph's kid. Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. Do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. I tell you the truth, he said, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the sky was shut for three and a half years and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah, hold that thought because you've got to have your pencil ready. Yet Elijah was not. You have to have this. Nudge your neighbor and say, sent. Who sent Elijah? God did. Elijah is a prophet in the Old Testament. He's God's man. He's a prophet. He was not sent to any of, the, of Israel, but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. So he was sent. You'll, we'll come back to that, but you have to remember that. Elijah was sent by God to this widow. You with me? Okay, so let's dig back in the story. First Kings chapter 17. So let's find out what does that mean? What do you mean sent? What for? And find out what happened there. First Kings chapter 17. And we'll begin reading in verse 7. Remember, there's a, a, a drought, three and a half years. A drought because Israel is in rebellion against God. Elijah is the prophet calling them to repentance. He is now living in the wilderness next to a brook a water supply, and ravens are actually carrying him food every day. God is taking care. God always funds his assignments. Write that down somewhere as well. God always funds his assignments. All right? Now, the brook dries up. The drought's lasting three and a half years. So we pick the story up here in verse number seven. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain. Then the word of the Lord came to to him, go at once to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food, or you could say ordained or chosen a widow, this person. So your first thought is, if he needs food and water, that this widow probably has a vast storehouse of food and water. Is that right? I mean, wouldn't you think that? Yeah, just yeah, help me out, yeah. If you, you, you think something else, I mean, I'm just telling you, a lot of people think that would make sense. If he is sent to her to feed him, you would assume in the natural she has food there. Okay. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called her and said, would you bring me a little bit of water in a jar so that I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he said, and bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she says, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. In other words, this is, we're out. The town's out. The country's out. We're out. Now, Elijah said to her this phrase, don't be afraid. Why? Because he's about to tell her her answer, but it doesn't make sense in the natural. It goes completely against your survival instincts to do this. He says, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you've said, but first, everyone say the word first. First, make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. So, 
in the natural, this is so rude, right? I mean, this widow is who she has a son, and she has one meal left, and you say, fantastic, give it to me first. I mean, does that make sense, right? But that's not what really is happening. You see, Elijah carries the mantle, the grace of the assignment. When she gives him the meal first, it changes governments. It then comes out of her dominion and comes under God's legal jurisdiction. In other words, her meal comes under the jurisdiction of the government of God that Elijah carries, the assignment. What she had was hers, but when she gives it to the assignment that God has, the anointing on the assignment comes on her meal. Okay, you follow that. This is so vital. You have got to get this. Okay. Thus, the meal changes because it changed governments. God can then intervene and begin to work with that situation. And so it goes on. The prophet says, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. And this is your answer. Elijah is the prophet of God. He's on God's assignment. But the Bible says he was sent to her. Now, he carried with him the word of her own deliverance, God's plan for her own salvation in that situation. Would you agree? How many here would like to have a word from God concerning your situation? That you may be facing lack, hard times, something's dried up, you need more, whatever it is. You, in the natural, there's nothing. In the natural, there's no answer. But with God, there's always an answer. How many would say, you know, I'd like to have that. I'd like to have that. You know, God is going to send those ideas, those concepts to who? Why was she chosen? Why? You have to know. This is spiritual principles. We have to dig into this. Inquiring minds not only want to know, they need to know why she was chosen and not one person was chosen in Israel. In fact, they were so upset with Jesus for saying that, they drove him out of town to kill him because they knew they were talking about them. So we have to answer the question, why was she chosen? Because she had the confidence and the faith and the courage enough to step out when he said, don't be afraid, here's your answer. She didn't draw back in fear. She stepped in by faith and did what the word of God said. Rich and Christy, $18,000, that's a lot of money. They had debt to pay. It made no sense in the natural to sow that money when they desperately had the plan to get out of debt. And yet, why would they sow it? Because they knew that the generous person would prosper, and they knew they had a bigger mountain than they had the ability to scale and climb themselves. They needed to get God involved. When they sowed that money, it changed jurisdiction. What you have is yours. But when you place it under an assignment that God has in the earth realm, the anointing on that assignment now comes on your provision. And God begins to give plans and direction and insight and to prosper you with unusual and sometimes strange ideas. <laughs> so understand that the word of God, a prophet carries the word of God. Now in this generation, in the New Testament church, we don't need prophets to tell us. We're filled with the Holy Spirit ourselves. The Holy Spirit can tell us the plans, the direction. We don't have to go look for a man or a woman who's a prophet to get direction because the Spirit of God's in us. But the principle is still the same. Cornelius drew God's attention to him, and he was chosen because of his heart for God and because he was generous. He had the same heart God does. That's God's heart. God is generous. He wants to touch people. And if you want God to get involved with your life financially, you have the same heart God does. You begin to get involved with touching people. You begin to become generous. You begin to touch people, to help people. And God is going to make sure that he brings ideas to you. He's going to send plans, ideas, favor, divine appointments into your life to make sure that you prosper and continue to prosper so you can touch more people. That is an amazing, amazing principle. Because the natural is to hold. The natural is to hold back. So let me ask you this question. How much did it cost her to obey, 
to follow God. In the natural, it looked like everything. Her last meal, correct? But in reality, it was her salvation. Understand this, God's not ever trying to take something from you. He's always trying to get something to you. And so if you'll believe that and you'll choose in your heart to be generous, then God will do amazing things. Now here's something else. It's not just the formula. Because the adjectives describing Cornelius didn't just say he gave something. It says he was God-fearing, he prayed every day, he prayed he had a heart for God. So you could follow the formula. It's like these electric lines, if they are all in perfect order, but they're not connected to the power company, they're, they, nothing happens. If your heart is a heart of generosity, remember 2 Corinthians says this, God delights in someone that is a cheerful giver. Someone has a heart for the kingdom, heart for people. If you are sold out to God and you would love the kingdom, you love God and you're generous, God works through you. It's not just the formula of giving that works. It's the complete dependence on God. She threw herself on God. It was her last meal. She had to throw her entire existence on God. God is her source. God is your source. Amen. 